So Alan, this, uh, tell me what this car is next to your Mitchell. This is a Didion Bouton, 1912. And this doesn't look like it. It looks like an antique car. And it is, you know, it's 112 years old. It's got a V8, a factory production V8. So the same thing where our Didion Bouton explosion trike from 1897 is really the earliest production hydrocarbon vehicle. Yeah. You no, know, just in a short 13 or 14 years later, they came out with literally the first production V8, and that's what's in this car here. Wow. So a Didion Bouton, they were extremely advanced. Extreme. They were moving quickly yes, they in were. their engineering. So this, uh, the Dion, yeah, I can tell it has a large radiator. And it's in the nickel era, right? Is this not no, nickel? No, it's still or, brass. Is that brass? It's okay. still brass, but it's 1912. So okay. you could switch, you know, and nickel was even a fancier version of brass. Okay. Because it's not nickel over steel, it's nickel over brass. Ah. So it's still a brass car, but it's nickel, which is another beauty treatment on top of brass. I got you. Okay, I'm having to continue to learn and we get to bring people along while I learn. And, and, they, and the nickel cars, you, you only need to clean them once in a while. You don't really need to polish them. The nickel stays nickel colored for a hundred times longer than ah. brass stays brass polished colored. So it was a serious maintenance change. Right. Ah. Serious. Wow. Way better. So this was a more expensive car than a brass car, even though it's a brass car era automobile. Interesting. Wow. I hope they uh, let us look under the hood later on. But uh, now how would you... So this was a fast car in yeah, its day. It could be very fast, depending on the rear end ratio. Right. It could have been set up as a luxury car with a low gear ratio. Okay. Or it could be a high speed. Uh, I don't know. I haven't talked to them. Right. But I would say it'd probably go at least 60 mile an hour at least. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and maybe more, depending on the rear end ratio that was chosen back 112 years ago. Right. Wow, it's a beautiful car. And obviously, a custom coach work looks like uh, Flandro in New York, looks like. Yeah. They supplied a lot of the manufacturers, the European manufacturers supplied chassis. Uh -huh. Plus, to import them in the United States, there was a 40 to 60% tariff on completed cars. So lots of cars were brought over in chassis form. I see. Or they created American agents. So the American agent for Rolls-Royce, the American agent for Didion, and so on. Okay. So there's, it, it could be a version, a variation of that, and probably is. The owner yeah. will be here in a while. So Yeah, I, we'll have to ask him. Very cool. Well, thanks for giving us a little insight of our, our next door neighbor to our Mitchell here. Yep. <laughs>